Hi, Jordan. Hi, I'm so happy to meet so you. So nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Are you excited to see your brain? I'm so excited. It's time to know everything. Well, you've been working on it for a long time. I have been working on it for a long time, but I'm not feeling too hot, so hopefully this will help. Well, that's our goal. All right. Jordan, thank you so much for doing this. Our mission is to end the idea of mental illness and change it to brain health. And you've been on this journey for a while, but I want to hear from you your goal. What would make this really important for you? Okay, thank you for having me. First of all, this is so exciting. And I'm so looking forward to learning about my brain. And for me, I think alleviating some of the things that I deal with from insomnia to anxiety would be very helpful. I was diagnosed with ADD in high school. I think you probably know because I filled out a lot of stuff before I came here. I read that, um, yeah. Yeah, so. And then you took Adderall for like I did. five years I and did. you thought it was helpful. I did. But then you went on sort of a natural quest and you went, mm, maybe this isn't the best. Exactly. That's when I went off of Adderall and birth control and all the other medications that I was taking, sleeping medications. I think I. And you were taking Trazodone for a long time. In fact, you had one of the side effects the doctor probably didn't warn you about, which is orthostatic hypotension, which is, and, and I like Trazodone, I think it's one of the best sleeping medicines. But when you change positions, if you don't change positions slowly, you blood pressure drops and you mm -hmm. fall mm -hmm. and you fell. I did. Yeah, I fell in the shower, hot shower. Thankfully, I had a lot of roommates at the time I was in college. They got me into my bed safely, but yeah, that was enough for me to stop taking trazodone. Um, have you seen a psychotherapist? Yeah, I've had a lot of experience with therapy starting at a young age. When I was five or six, I started seeing a therapist that I would see off and on for many years. How come? So my parents noticed a lot of like obsessive compulsive habits that I would have. And I didn't, I like to wear my clothes inside out for one, because I felt my very sensitive to tags and seams and I would scream and cry and they would brush my hair and I would say, this hurts so bad. And they had never experienced this. Um, so, so you were a very sensitive child. Very sensitive. Yeah, so when- Which is very common with ADD. That makes sense. Very and common. In fact, um, People who have ADD, they feel everything. Everything. Yeah. My parents, yeah, they were a little concerned. I was very different than them. And then my siblings, my half siblings, my dad has three kids from a previous marriage. And the therapist at that time told my parents, normal, like she's, you know, normal. She's very emotional. She's very comfortable expressing herself to you, but nothing to be concerned about. Um, and then, yeah, I continued to see her throughout my childhood and I've had many therapists since then for different reasons. And you started the Adderall when you were how old? I was in high school. I think I was a junior in high school, either a sophomore or a junior. And that's when I started Adderall. I never took it every day. Day. I probably should have. I think I was supposed to. But um, yeah, I just remember that I didn't take it every day. But I I did feel focused when I took it. And did you feel more anxious when you took it or less anxious when you took it? Back then, I didn't really have a concept of anxiety or if I was anxious or not back at that time in my life. Um, but if I could remember... I mean, maybe it made me feel more anxious. I think there was a reason that I didn't take it all the time. Um, I just chose not to. Because sometimes it makes people feel less anxious. I see. I could see that. I mean... Because sometimes the hyperactivity comes out in... You can't sit still. Right. Sometimes it comes out in anxiety. Right. And so... It just depends yeah. on you. Your 
brain, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, it shows both ADD and anxiety. Uh, all right, let me show your scans. I can't wait to see. I'm just thrilled. So this is an example of a healthy scan. Okay. And SPECT is the study we do basically shows us three things. Good activity, too little, or too much. Uh -huh. And then my job is to balance it. When we look at your scan, you see it's sleepy here in the front. Do you see the holes? Yeah. So you have ADD. Yeah. It's really clear. You probably had it since you were a little girl. And given the fact that most of your life or 80% of your life, it's not been treated, it's chronic stress. And that chronic stress can hurt your immune system. Mm -hmm. And then if you're under chronic stress from having untreated or ineffectively treated ADD, and then you whack yourself in the head, yeah. all of those things can sort of stack. Um, and your temporal lobes are significantly less active than they should be. And that's giving you the cognitive problems, the mm -hmm. brain fog. Mm -hmm. And so we have to find a way, and it's possible to make that normal. Okay. So none of it's dead. Okay. None of it's permanent. Good. But we have to put your brain in a healing environment. Now, wow. usually with lime and mold, I see holes like all over the place. Yeah. And I don't see that. Good. You, that you have a lot of great brain activity. So I would let go. What I have done has helped me. Mm -hmm. But we need to do more. Mm -hmm. Now here, again, blue is average activity. Red and white are the most active parts of the brain. Your cerebellum's a bit sleepy. Okay. Um, this area in the top back part of your brain, it's called the posterior cingulate, goes with people who are smart. So they actually did a study at UCLA that people have increased activity there goes with intelligence. That. So that's amazing. I would own that. Yeah. See I these two that. things that look like eyes? Yes. Those are your anxiety centers. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's hard for you to just settle it down when you do the breathing tell me what you do like breath work type of thing i do a few different styles of breath work but something that i do i try to do this at night while i'm falling asleep the box breath like the in for four hold for four out for four release for four um that's something that i do a lot Does that help? no <laughs> I mean, not as much as it should. Does it help a little bit? Yes, yes. I'm not um, a big fan of box breathing. Um, I would switch it at night to um, in for four, hold for seven, okay. out for eight. Okay, in for four, hold for seven. Eight. So I have an app called Happy Brain, uh -huh. and we have a sleep breathing. Okay, and good. that's that one. That's what I need. And then, but during the day, so again, I'm not a fan of box breathing, because the research shows if you take twice as long to breathe out as you breathe in, it triggers a parasympathetic response. And your body's sort of always in a fight or flight mm -hmm. response. And so in for four. So during the day when you're feeling anxious, in fact, I do it twice a day. In for four, hold it for a second, out for eight, hold it for a second. So they're basically 15 second breaths. And you do that just three minutes twice a day, you'll begin to notice your body's gonna begin to settle down. And it increases blood flow okay. to the brain. Good. Mental health. So I look back on your adolescence and you had an ex-boyfriend tried to kill himself. Tell me about yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we were 
very much in love. He was very much a soulmate in my life. We were together off and on for 10 to 12 years. And so, yeah, his first suicide attempt, we were 16. And I truly thought that he had died because I received a letter from him on MySpace, which was the thing at the time. Um, and I went through at least an hour thinking that he had died. Wow. Um, and that was enough for me. I've never been able to reverse that feeling. Um, even finding out that he was alive about an hour after that, going to his parents' house and knocking on the door and finding out that he was alive and he was in the hospital. And my life was never the same. And his life was never the same. And we were off and on together for many years after that, pretty much until I met my now husband. People who have ADD, they don't know they do this, but they do it. They play this little game in their head called let's have a problem because there's dopamine in trouble. Mm -hmm. There's dopamine in high risk behaviors. There's dopamine in negativity. It's like, why are you staying with someone who's unpredictable, who is obviously not very good for you? Right. Because I love him mm -hmm. or it's because I love dopamine. Mm -hmm. And he gave you that fix. Right. And so he was sort of your drug. Yeah. And so people who are sort of normal, reliable, predictable, like reasonably good partners become boring. Right. Because there's no dopamine and exactly. um, predictability. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like me. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, um, so the diaphragmatic breathing will help um, make something called calm my brain. Mm -hmm. which is made with ashwagandha, theanine, magnesium, but in really healthy doses, mm -hmm. that can help. And we might want to think about a stimulant for you. What type of stimulant? Well, so or like what, naturally, what is we could go with something like focus and energy. Uh-huh. It's got ashwagandha, rhodiola, um, ginseng. But I wouldn't be opposed to you even trying Adderall or Concerta again. Um, and why? Because like I own a supplement company and I always think what's well, the natural way to do this. Mm -hmm. But I also know people have ADD, generally the stimulants they respond better to. So from a supplement standpoint, I recommend Brain and Body Power Max, two packets a day a great multiple vitamin, high dose, high quality fish oil, which will help decrease the inflammation. And then something called brain and memory power boost that will help you feel cognitively sharper. Okay. I actually studied it on football players, NFL players, 80% of them were better in two months. Wow. With just that. That's amazing. And if they're smoking pot, I told them to stop it. Yeah, sounds amazing. I'm excited. That sounds like a good plan. I'm excited too. I've known for all this time that I have ADD and I just haven't really done anything about it. I just thought of it as something that you grow out of or you don't or you just live with it. So this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's just good to know what's going on with our bodies and our brains. <laughs>